your inner being understands what your path of least resistance is and hear what we mean by that because if you want something and you're not living it your inner being knows how to help you help yourself get to where you need to be in order to have what you want to have your inner being knows the path of least resistance and the resistance you've put on your path that's interesting your inner being isn't guiding you through the trials and tribulations of life that others have put roadblocks up for you because there isn't any of that happening feels like it sometimes though doesn't it your inner being is guiding you over and under and around and through the path of least resistance that you have put the resistance on your path and so we talked yesterday and Esther just mused about it and reveled in it all night long because we said something in a different way than she had heard us say before we said your inner being will lead you to something and if you're too blocked off to hear it then your inner being will lead you to something that will lead you to that but if you're too blocked off for that then your inner being will lead you to something that will lead you to something that will lead you to something but if you're too blocked off for that then your inner being will lead you to something that will lead you to something that will lead you to something that will lead you to something and that's why sometimes you lose the trail not the trail of getting to where you want to be but the trail of understanding that you have been led that you have had guidance that's the only explanation that any of you could possibly offer about why you don't know with every fiber of your physical being how loved you are how known you are how in awareness you are so that's what we would like to lull you back into an awareness today we want you to feel your connection with source a connection that source always has with you but you don't always have with source sometimes you're just so ornery you don't let it in and sometimes you feel like you have really good reason to feel the way you do we don't argue with you about that Esther will say hey Abraham clearly you need more information about this situation <laughs> because if you knew what I know you'd feel like I feel and we say yeah we would but we don't go there we don't want to feel like you're feeling we don't want to disconnect ourselves from the source of clarity and love and well-being we stand in knowledge of well-being and you can do whatever you want and there's no judgment or no blame about you doing stupid oh <laughs> it's not that way at all we have understanding about why you're aware you are that's why we offer endlessly guidance but you've got to be in the receptive mode before you can hear it and so that's what we want to talk with you about today how you can be in the receptive mode of something that you want when you are living the absence of it and the reason that that's difficult for most of you is because you've got your focus set on what is you're intoxicated with what is manifestations so if you want something or someone and it's not in your experience right now and you focus in pain on the absence of this that you want you're not in the receptive mode of what you want and most humans say sort of logically well Abraham you know if you would just give us what we want <laughs> then we wouldn't be focused on the absence of it would we and we say but you see you've got to practice the vibration of something before it can become a reality and that's a process isn't it it's a process that you understood so well when you came into your physical body you knew that you would come into an environment of vast contrast and you liked that because you knew by exploring and examining the contrast of your life experience that you would come to personal conclusions and decisions about what you want and so as you come to those personal conclusions and decisions sometimes you don't even know you're doing it when you know what you don't want you know what you do want so you are emanating these vibrational requests now sometimes when we say you're vibrating or you're offering vibrational requests you don't understand that because you don't understand that you are vibrational you don't understand often so many people don't know this that what they see is a translation of vibration it's energy translated through your physical eyes into the realization that you have your nose your fingertips everything about your physical senses are you translating vibration 
so once you accept that you are a vibrational being in a vibrational universe and you accept that you are emitting vibrations even without words sometimes and that every one of those requests of something that you believe would make your life better is received in this vortex in this vibrational reality we gave it the name vortex because we wanted you to feel the realness of it we wanted you to find a way to feel the realness of what you're creating before it manifests because if you need it to manifest before you believe it it can't manifest you have to believe it before it can be translated fully into all that you experience with your physical senses so you have to find a way in religious terms you call it faith or trust we want to say if we were standing in your physical shoes we would tune ourselves to an awareness of this vibrational reality we would come to understand that our emotions are letting us know whether we are in this moment with this thought with this word with this action moving toward wanted or unwanted that's really what we want you to know so we've been calling this the art of allowing because even though you've done step one of the creative process really well even without knowing you're doing it you've sifted and sorted and you have asked and asked and asked and asked and asked for so many things and everything that you've asked for has been answered and answered and answered and answered it has culminated in this vibrational reality and source has been tending it and law of attraction has been growing it and it is bursting at the seams ready for you to realize what's being revealed to you all the time but you've got to be in the receptive mode you've got to be happy you've got to be tuned in tapped in turned on you've got to be in that mindset where you can realize it the other day we told you this story yesterday and so some of you have heard it and you will like it extra well today <laughs> but we want you to realize that you have beliefs that keep you from realizing your own desires if you want something and you believe that you don't have it and you believe that it's hard to come or you believe that you have to do things that you don't want to do in order to get it you stand in the way of your own desire and you have many beliefs that serve you really well and a belief is only a thought you continue to think it's only a thought that has enough momentum that now it's manifesting so when you have a belief that opposes your desire your desire cannot be realized by you your belief is holding you out of the receptive mode so you continue to say it's not coming and that's true because you can't see it and no one else can it's true in the physical manifested sense but it's not true in the vibrational sense it's not true in the what happens before it becomes vibrationally seen by you sense and that's the thing that we want to make you aware of so much of what you want is well underway that because you can't see it yet with your physical senses you decide that it isn't when it is and that's where more than faith and more than trust we want you to understand the laws of the universe we want you to understand what your inner being knows about that desire we want you to understand how your inner being feels about that desire and we want you to know by your emotions whether you are in agreement with the belief that your inner being has about your desires or whether you are not and so in the short of it when you feel negative emotion about something that you want you don't believe as your inner being believes and your belief about the thing you want is keeping you from being in the receptive mode where you can't see it you can't get the clues you can't follow the trail you can't follow the path it's not coming to you not anytime soon you see so we like it when you have faith but we'd rather that you just have knowledge of the laws of the universe and an understanding of how you feel when you are letting something in that you want and how you feel when you're not letting something in that you want or how you feel when you're letting something in that you don't want or how you feel when you're not letting something in that you don't want you getting it so a few days ago Esther is at her makeup table getting dressed putting her face on as she says oh ye of little face <laughs> so she has everything spread out and she has a loose powder that's in a container it's quite large it's a black container has a black lid on and the lid screws and reveals the powder puff and the powder so Esther is ready for it and she picks up her powder but it's only an empty lid and she thinks what happened to the powder where is it she looks all around her table now her table is this big this big 
She looks everywhere on the table. What happened to my powder? So she goes and rifles through her suitcase. Maybe it came apart in the suitcase, which she is dreading because that means there's going to be a mess in there. <laughs> Maybe I left it in San Diego at the last hotel. She's trying to rationalize why it isn't where it should be. So then we inspired her to make her bed, to hang up her clothes, to put her shoes on. And then she went back to finish putting her face on. And she looked down and there was the powder right next to the lid. It was right there. It wasn't more than three inches away. But her belief that it was in the container that it was always in was so strong that she could not see it where it really was. And if it hadn't happened to her, she would not know with the fervor that she knows it, how her own belief about something can keep her from seeing something that's right before her. You miss all kinds of clues that your inner being is giving you, leading you to that, which will lead you to that, which will lead you to that, which will lead you to that on this joyous journey of unfolding to everything that you want. But often you can't see it right in front of your own face because you have beliefs that disallow it. Now we know you've had these experiences. Esther couldn't find a pen one time. It was a beautiful golden pen. She looked and looked and looked for it. They had moved. She turned the house upside down. She opened every box. She dumped out all of her purses. She looked everywhere and she decided that that pen was really lost. And then about a month later, she was looking for something else, a perfume sprayer. And she's reaching around, going through the same process, looking for something else and came out with the pen, the pen that was in that bag all along that she had searched through more than once wanting so much to find it but believing it was lost and so you can't find what you believe is lost and you can't experience what you believe is not possible and you can't experience something that you want that you believe is hard and you're not willing to do the hard thing that you believe it takes you have so many beliefs we love you so much so many screwy beliefs so many beliefs about what is that you don't let what is in the process of becoming become because what is is blocking for you what is becoming so that's the essence of what the art of allowing is the art of allowing is not being so activated about what is it's about chilling it's about cooling your jets it's about kicking back a little bit it's about not trying so hard to justify or validate your well-being through your hard work, which you resent. <laughs> because there are others who are obviously not working that hard, who are thriving. <laughs> it's about coming into awareness of the laws of the universe. And most important about your guidance system and what it tells you so that you can be more often in the receptive mode. So just going to tell you a very fast beginning here. So you've sifted through the contrast and you've launched rockets of desire. Many of them, so many, you cannot even count them. And some of them you would recognize because you remember the day that you asked for it. But many of them have matured into something even more than the pieces that you put there. In other words, you have a vibrational reality that you have created through the life that you have lived and even before you came into this physical body that in many cases is not recognizable to you in the detail that it holds so since you can't see it yet you can't know it with your physical senses you have to feel your way to it which simply means when you are feeling happy you are not blocking anything that's there so you could have a whole lot of problems for which you are looking for a whole lot of solutions and all of those solutions are there but in your awareness of the problem you can't find the solution even though they're being revealed to you over and over and over and over and over again so you have to be in the receptive mode that's what step three is step one is you ask step two is source answers the vortex is there it's full of everything you want step three is you got to get in the receptive mode we call that the allowing mode, the allowing of what you want to flow into your experience. So the way you accomplish the receptive mode is by being happy, by feeling good. But then you say, I can't feel good because of this. And we say, then you're not in the receptive mode. 
then you are a vibrational match to the problem, not in the receptive mode for the solution.